Alright guys, my name is Amenta Goblin and today we're going to be giving you a list of the top overpowered leveling items in vanilla classic World of Warcraft. So the items on this list are basically those kind of items which will actually last you quite a few levels. I mean you do replace gear pretty quickly when you're leveling up, but well, these items will probably last a good 5-10 to 10 levels, if not more. In fact the first item on this list will just basically last you forever because of its gimmick value. So just before we jump in guys, um, be sure to follow me on all social media and also on Twitch because I'm going to start streaming on Twitch a bit more often now. And um, let's jump into the video. But the last thing I just wanted to mention, I've tried to avoid going for really popular choices that everyone knows about, such as the Whirlwind Dax and the Gravestone Scepter. I've tried to go for less obvious items on this list, basically that's what I'm trying to say. So the first item on this list is the Hydro Cane, which drops from the Vicious Fallout, that 33% uh, drop chance from the, basically the first boss in Gnomeron. You may be wondering why this item is on this list. This is useful for literally every single class in the game, and that's because of its gimmick value, which allows you to do underwater breathing. There's a number of situations in vanilla World of Warcraft where you just have to go underwater, you have to spend a lot of time underwater killing mobs or getting items, and then you, keep, you have to keep jumping up and down, well, not jumping up and down, but keep swimming up and swimming down to catch your breath which oh, it just costs you loads of value time, valuable time, so basically I definitely recommend picking up this staff. Don't feel bad about needing on it, because it's literally useless for every single class, probably apart from Warrior. Warrior is literally the only thing that could probably benefit from actually using this staff because of the weapon damage. You know, it doesn't provide any extra stats or anything, so anyone should need on this staff because it's very, very useful. The second item on this list, I've just simply put down Herod gear. The reason why I put him down, because literally everything on this list is, uh, everything that drops from Herod is very useful, uh, particularly the Scarlet Leggings, I think they're the, probably the best item that drops because of that very significant strength increase, that's probably going to last you a serious, serious amount of time, and the other items are obviously very valuable. Um, another thing to note is obviously for, this is less valuable for Warrior though however, because about this time you're going to get access to plate gear, which means you're going to start replacing this gear very quickly with plate gear, however, Shamans about this time get access to male gear, so this is actually more advantageous for shamans because gear will last a lot longer on a shaman because they've just got access to male. And again, and the, the two-handed axe is also useful for shamans. The third item on this list is a very significant DPS increase for rogues while leveling. This is something you're going to put in your offhand because obviously it's a slow dagger, uh, sorry, a fast dagger. And the reason why this is so good, I um, kind of have to give you a little bit of a rundown on stats really, because when you're leveling up you can't really stack stats very effectively, so when you stack stats, the actual, sorry my phone went off, the actual DPS increase from getting it from stacking stats is not normally quite minor to be honest, it minorly increases your weapon DPS. Which is why flat damage, everyone knows this, like when, when you're playing Warrior you just want weapons that have seriously high damage. and Basically, the flat fire damage on this weapon is very, it's going to be quite a significant DPS increase, basically. I mean, these flat damage weapons are very rare, so when you can find them, definitely get them. The, the fortunate thing is, basically, this drops, by the way, from Scar Scarlet Graveyard. Um, Scarlet Graveyard, basically the first boss, which is Interrogator Vicious. I have it all in front of me. Um, but the unfortunate thing is it's 10% drop chance, so... I wouldn't recommend, you know, farming it constantly, but because uh, that would just waste time. It's definitely, you know, good good to pick up. Another light mention, is that there's a very good quest in that you obtain from the same boss room as this um as Interrogator Vicious. Definitely recommend picking that quest up and trying to get a group to do it because um the rewards from that one are actually quite good as well. By the way guys, if you've enjoyed the video so far, be sure to give it a like and just, you know, share it with your friends on Discord or something. Because that really does, you know, help out a lot, you know, increases the chance of me being able to do videos a bit more full time and being able to make more videos and not you know having to work full time and doing videos at the same time so please be sure to you know give a like because it really does help out and I really appreciate it. The third item on this list is the snake hoop. The reason why this is on this list is first of all because it's very easy to obtain. You get this from Willix the Importer, it's basically the escort quest at the end of RFK so I definitely recommend picking it up because the rewards are quite nice. And basically, first thing is the flat intellect increase. It's really important to stack a big man as big a mana pool as you can when you're leveling as pretty much any caster class. And another reason why is because basically rings are kind of rare when you're leveling up. You know, good rings anyway. So this item, if you're unlucky, could last you all the way to level 60, along with the um, lavishly 
the lav whatever it's called, the ring from Dead Mines. I'll also put it on the screen as well. But uh, these two items, you know, with a flat intellect increase, are probably more beneficial than other rings that you're going to get while leveling up because you just want that big mana pool. So yeah, this, this item will probably last you quite a while. The next item on this list is Venom Strike. This drops from the second to last boss on the Wailing Caverns. It's quite a high drop chance. I've seen it drop quite a few times. And the reason why this is so good is the same reason why the Torture and Poker is so good. And it's because of that flat damage increase. Um, you know, 3 to 6 nature damage. This would last you forever, this bow, if you manage to get it. Um, you know, for the same reasons. It's just a such a significant DPS increase. The sixth item on this list, I've simply just put down the Defiers Brotherhood quest rewards, right? Um, this quest starts, it starts in Westfall and takes you around the spot, it's actually quite good to do, you get do, do get quite a bit of XP from this. The only issue is if, if it's uh, close to a server launch, um, it might be difficult to do the Defiers Traitor Escort quest, um, you might just be wasting time to be honest, waiting for that quest to spawn because a lot of people would be trying to do it, um, and it depends how you know, what kind of mechanics classic launches with to deal with problems like that, if if any at all. But basically the, re the rewards, you know, the first thing you've got is a ma male pants for a warrior. That'll last you a good 5 to 10 levels because of that significant strength increase. Um, the Trunica Westfall, basically extremely good for feral druids and rogues. And the staff is a bit meh, I don't think it's very useful just because you can probably find a better intellect piece pretty quickly. But there you go, those two rewards are really good. The seventh item on this list is the Red Mage Weave Headband. The reason why I put this on is, you know, one, it's probably the easiest item to obtain on this list because you can very quickly get off the auction house. It does drop from a world drop recipe though, so depending on the stage of what your server's at, where it's a server launch, you might not find this item, but you probably will find it later on um, after a server's been released. The reason why I put this on is just simply because of that flat intellect bonus. It's really good for basically every class. Um, there you go, you really can't complain with it. The seventh item on this list is another gimmicky one. Uh, this, it's either the Beast Masher or the Beast Slayer. This drops from a quest called Mighty Ucha. It's basically the first quest that you get when you go into Ungaro Crater. It'll just be on the right. Uh, these two blokes, uh, Tora and, and a troll sit on a rock. Very easy to obtain. I recommend doing their quests very quickly because basically this weapon gives an attack bonus, power bonus to fighting beasts exclusively, but it's like double what you would normally get from a normal item, right? So, and in this zone, there's loads of beasts. Um, so, and even later on leveling, there will be loads of beasts. So yeah, it's just a great item to go for very early on. And even when you're not in Ungaro Crater anymore, I'd recommend basically just keeping this item on you for whether you, whenever you're doing a quest that requires you to kill loads of beasts, just swap out to this item and take advantage of it. It's very useful for warriors uh, and shamans, obviously. And then obviously you should go for it, um, the one-handed alternative, when you are a rogue. The next item on this list, second to last one I have for you, is the Vanquish's, Vanquish's Sword which is, it drops from a quest reward, so it's very easy to obtain. It's bring the, le bring the end or bring the light, depending on what faction you play. This is the most advantageous to it for a rogue, but it's also very useful for a warrior. Um, if you are tanking, you know, you can swap to this item whenever you need to tank a dungeon. And uh, that flat attack power bonus is, you know, it's pretty, quite a, quite a bosh of, um, of stats there for you. That will increase your weapon DPS quite significantly. Um, not much more to say about it. And our second item is basically a similar situation, basically exactly the same what I've just said, apart from a little bit later on in the leveling process, and it's that, that's the Frash Blade. It drops from a Corruption of Earth and Seed, it's a 100% job chance from, well, because it's a quest. Uh, you know, just run through Maradon once when you're about... I think this drops basically, well, this is obtainable in the late level 40s to early 50s. I'd definitely recommend doing a rush rush, rush of Marid Maradon to get this item. The reason why this item is so useful, right, if you look at the top comment on the, the database here, this guy, well, second top comment, basically, he argues that it's competitive with Blood Razor, right? And the reason why is because of that gimmick effect, right? Chance on hit grant an extra attack on your next swing. The reason why this is so useful is because an extra attack, first of all, does some serious damage because it basically scales, right? When, when you in, when you get better gear, uh, you know, you're fully decked out in raid gear, right? So say you, you get this item level 50 and you've got a certain... you'll have a certain basic, basically weapon hit damage, but when you get more gear, 
obviously that weapon damage inc increases but the thing that's good about this is because it grants an extra swing so that extra swing will take into consideration your all of your stats so basically it's infinitely scalable right and um, they do Blizzard unfortunately put gimmicks into the game so this items like this don't be use can't be used for a level 120 for instance but you know it, it also stacks extremely well with the badge of justice trinket which also grants an extra next swing so this is this item is basically pre-raid bis um, if you stack those two items together and yeah it's just going to be useful basically forever right it's just so useful to get um, at level you know late level 40 so that's a uh, you know that's that's pretty much me. Another honourable mention, obviously, obviously, is um, the Verdon Keeper's Aim, which is basically a bow you also get from the same quest reward. Again, it has flat nature damage, so that's probably going to last you quite a while as well as a hunter. But obviously don't pick it if you're a rogue, right? Because uh, you want a Frash Blade. And that's pretty much where I'm going to end you in the video uh, today, guys. If you liked the video, you know, give it a like and share it with your friends. My name is Goblin. to my next video. Ciao.